Okay, what I want to show you is how to make a master, like um, master layout slide, which is sort of like a template that you can apply to any time you need to do figures. Of course, you might have different rows and column numbers, but that's okay. So much easier to adjust it um, by using a master, I think, because it, it, yeah, it'll just make it easier to make everything line up automatically. So um, what we're going to do is first, and okay, so I'm on a Mac, which is different than a PC. Um, and so what you can do is if, you know, you don't know how to get to something that I get to, you can either do search, PowerPoint help, you can go to um, the Microsoft, um, if you go here, you can always go down to, you know, let's type in uh, master slide. And it tells you how to get there, but you can always search the article in the browser and that'll bring you to this site, which might help you because it has other things that are related. Um, you can always search. Whenever you're going to search, make sure you put in PowerPoint um, since that's a program we're in. So maybe it'll give us a master layout ideas. And it even has a video here. Okay, so you want to go to View and Slide Master. And we're going to make a master layout. Okay, so um, if you don't have a blank one, what you can do is just to insert layout. And I'm going to take away everything on here. So if you need to highlight more than thing at more than one thing at a time, what you can do is drag and just go over everything you want to highlight. Let's say I just want to highlight the bottom stuff. You can do that. You can also click on the um, object, and then for me, I hold down Command. Um, for PCs, I think it's Control. It might be Alt, but you can do that. Let's say I didn't want this middle one. You can do that as well. So let's say highlight, and then I could undo the middle one. Okay, I'm going to delete that and delete this. Okay, so what we need to do is insert placeholders. And basically, this means that you can insert um, content into this placeholder when you get to your slide. I tried doing um, content overall, which means you can insert anything. But for some reason, it's resizing itself when I'm inserting the picture, which is not what I want. So for me, when I did picture, it worked out well. So I'm going to do picture. It doesn't matter what you draw. So you're just going to draw a picture box. And then I um, don't need a bullet. So I'm just going to delete my bullet. And then I'm going to want to make it a certain size. So let's do, I don't know, we'll see how this looks. For your test tubes, this should be reasonable. It depends on how many rows you have as well. Um, so let's do the rows and we'll see how many we need. Okay, so in order to, um, let's actually do this as well. Okay, we're going to go to the home and let's just center everything. So we're going to do this align text and do the middle and just center this here. I'm also going to make the font smaller so it's not like being problematic when we're in, like overlapping and stuff when we're working with it. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this so you know you can do your right click and then your copy. It also tells you the shortcut. So for me, it's Command C. It might be Control C for uh, PC users. So I'm going to control, uh, Command C and I'm going to just Command V, which is the paste. Okay, and I'm going to put these next to each other. Uh, I'm going to see how many I need down and see if this is a reasonable size. So I'm just going to keep copying and pasting. Actually, I don't even need to copy. I'll just keep pasting. Um, and you'll notice, actually, in order to line it up, uh, PowerPoint does some nice things. If you have it on um, the grid line. So if you go to View uh, and Guides and Dynamic Guides, it'll automatically help you snap, to, or not snap, but it'll help you line stuff up. So you'll notice when I pull it and it becomes in line, it makes you have these dotted lines, which is useful. Um, it also, if you want to make it the same distance apart, that's also a useful thing. So let's say I put these guys this far apart. The next ones I pull in, when it comes up with these little lines, or sometimes if you get closer, it might be little stars. It depends. Uh, it'll tell you those two places it's marking are the same distance apart, which is useful. So for me, I'm going to end up having um, our three different groups of test tubes and then our control. We're going to need a control for some of these groups. 
If you have more groups, you'll just resize these as appropriate. So you can, and you'll notice this here too. If I've clicked off of it, you're not gonna see this um, like sub menu option, a specific menu. So when I click on it, it brings up my shape format menu, which is gonna be somewhere in this area. Sometimes it might come up over here. I can make a format pane so you can work with it that way um, to change the height and the width. And you'll notice mine are not locked because I want to just change them independently now. It's not like resizing a picture or something. So if you had more groups, you might do something like okay. And um, oops. oh, also, if I wanted to highlight everything on the slide, I can do my Command A or Control A, and that highlights everything, which can be quite useful. All right, so now I'm going to need um, groups across. So I will highlight the whole thing, do my copy and paste, Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V. And I'm gonna put these next to each other. I want them pretty close in this case because we don't want a lot of space. And then I'm gonna paste again. We'll move this down because I need some words. So let's insert placeholder and let's choose text. Content would probably work in this case as well. But I'm just gonna choose text because I know that'll work. I'm just gonna make a box and then I'm gonna resize that. Okay, first of all, I don't need this. So I'll click inside of it and do select everything, Command A, and then delete that all. Uh, I'm also gonna make the text smaller because it's gonna be annoying. So home, and I'm just gonna make it 12. For now, we can adjust that appropriately later. I'll put it in the middle and align it in the middle of the slide as well. Okay, so let's make sure it's the same distance. Let's see, there you go. Do you see how it has those lines? So now it's the same distance, although we might end up making it closer because the words. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste this. If you wanted to, instead of copying it two more times, what you could do is choose both these guys and then just copy and paste them since I have four, and it'll just automatically do it. And you see it's lining up with those um, dotted lines, so I know that that's all aligned. If you're having trouble lining it up, you can also select all of these or select whatever you want to line up. Um, and you can go to your arrange, wherever that is, and then align. You might have to look up how to get there, but I can align it via any kind of um, like location, so I'll align at top for this one, it's already aligned. Uh, and I can also distribute it, so let's say I have like this one over here, I can, those are my two endpoints, if I select those and go to align and go to distribute, in this case horizontally, it'll space them the same apart from each other, so sometimes that's useful. Now I need text up, atop, up the top for our uh, column text, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. It's going to need to be a different size, but I'll just adjust that when I get there. Okay. And in this case, I think I'm going to put my text on the bottom because I want it close to the pictures. Okay. Then I'll take this and I will copy and paste it. over each. Okay, so now you have your slide master and you are going to, let's rename it. Let's rename it um, figure grid. I think I might have one named this already. Let's just see. Nope. Okay, figure grid. Great. That's good for us. And then we can close the master. Great. So now I have a blank slide or you can insert a new slide and choose the layout you want. But if you um, already have a slide, you can always just go to layout and then insert it here. Great, so now we have the layout that we want. Um, so we can start putting in the groups. So this is gonna be the originals. This is gonna be the Benedict's test. This will be the iodine test. And it's automatically shrunk these. Not crazy about that I'll stop automatic fitting. Let's put them all in the middle now. Great. And then I'm going to put my groups here. So let's just say I'm a filtration group. One layer cheesecloth. Maybe I need a yeah, make it a bit 
long. So, you know, adjust it reasonably. picture as well. But I'm clicking on the icon. I'm going to choose a picture. These are not the pictures that you're looking at. I'm choosing random pictures I have. Um, so on my Mac, you can either, either it's going to pull up pictures. You can go to your where you put pictures. You can go to your photo album and just select from there. And so let's see. I'm just going to choose, I'll choose these guys so I can zoom in for you. So I'm going to choose all of them at the same time, which is really nice because they all just insert it into each box. So I'm just going to choose the ones I want. I'll hold down my command. If you have them all in a row, you can just click the two ends, hold shift and click the two ends of what you want. But I'm going to use select one. So I have to hold down my command or probably control. Um, so I need four of those. Great. Okay. So there we go. I have some pictures, but they're not the right thing. I'm not, I don't need to like re I need to zoom in on a certain part. So I'm going to click this here. I'm going to go to picture format. And then I'm going to, to change this um, cropping here. So I'm going to click crop and I'm going to say fit. So that's going to fit the picture width. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to allow us to resize the picture within the window without changing it. So then I'm going to, and you need these like thick lines on here. I'm not going to actually crop it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it by the corner. Now, if you pull it by the ends, you're going to screw the whole thing up because it's getting distorted. So you never pull by the ends. You always pull by the corner. Some programs, you may have to even hold down shift. And so I always just hold shift for like, you know, uh, just in case. Um, there's one program I ever worked with that shift made it not work, but you'll figure that out pretty quickly. Great. So now I'm going to zoom in on whatever I'm interested in. So for you, it'll be the color of your test tube, just the liquid part. Okay, here I'm going to choose the shell. Great. And then I'll click off of it and then it's zoomed in on my shell and it's the right size. So here, let's do it again. Picture format, crop, and you'll say fit. Although I guess you don't even have to do that really. So you'll crop it and then you can just drag the picture and make it as big as you want. Great. So that's the positive control now. And this is going to be the negative control. I'm not happy with all those being like this. Let's line that up first. Okay. So I would adjust these to make them aligned properly. Great. Um, and then what you're going to do is you'll have your orange ones in here. So these three will be your three processes. So whatever or more, if you have more boxes. So it'll be like whatever you did to process it, filtering, concentration, whatever. Um, then you'll have your Benedict's test here. And in this box will be um, whatever your positive control was, the honey. And then in your negative control would be your water or if you use the um, cornstarch. Then your iodine test results. And then your positive control, that would be the cornstarch. And your negative control could be honey or water, depending on how you did it. Okay, so I'm not going to like resize again here, even though I need it bigger. I'm just going to do that in the program, um, in the Word document. So I'm just going to highlight the whole thing and push and do my copy. So I'll command C it. And then I'm going to go to a Word document here. Great. And here's my results. So in figure one, I'm just going to insert this. So you need to do paste special, which you can do a number of ways. So one way is to go up to um, edit and paste special. There's also a shortcut here. Uh, you can also often paste it and then it'll give you an option. That's no good. Um, I know that it does that in uh, on PCs. It'll give you, you know, you know that option here kind of thing. And um, sometimes it'll just have the thing where you can do the paste special. I'm just going to do it through here because I know. The reason I do that is because then I can choose it to be um, instead of individual pictures and stuff. I can choose it to be a, uh, a PDF, which is the best resolution, or a picture. Um, I don't know. I don't do graphic objects. So I'll pick one of these, and I'll show you the difference. So picture here is going to be a TIFF, and I can resize it as I want. Again, you're not dragging by the edges because that's all distorty. 
And I can see, I see a lot of professionals that don't know how to do that and it makes it, you know, the credibility just goes way down. So you're going to drag and make it as big as you think it needs to be to be able to be seen. Um, and then uh, that's one thing. So you'll notice here's the resolution here. You can look at that skull. Okay, let me show you what it looks like with a PDF. I'll just delete that so I have room. Play special. This time I'll choose PDF. Now this is going to make the file a lot bigger, but you'll notice here the skull resolution is a lot better. Oops. So it just depends on how, you know, clearly you need to see your, your figure. Um, okay. Great. Now, if you want to type on the side, let's say we want to put our um, some information or something over here. What you can do is if you click on your object now and you go to your picture format, um, you can do arrange and then position uh, or wrap text around. So position is going to, yeah, it's better to do wrap text. Okay, wrap text and I'm going to do it square so that way um, it'll be able to type on the side. Now. Do I want it typed on the side like this? In this case, no. But um, if you want to be able to do that, it might be correct. In fact, in your formal report, you'll probably have something like this for some of your figures at least. Um, if you're doing a figure like information, you can do it to where it's above or below or to the side. If you're having problems with the formatting and it's driving you crazy, what you can do is do a text box. Okay, so to do a text box, you'll just do your like insert um, text box or there's a deal up here to do that, probably under insert text box. Okay, and then you can insert it over here, um, which is nice because then you can type whatever you want. Let's say figure one. Um, And then let's say, okay, I'm gonna bold that. And let's say I need to write some information about it. Then I can write down what it is. And actually in these cases, I would um, single space it because that looks ridiculous. So having problems with this. It's clearly not single spacing. All right, so at single space or 1.5 space it, something like that, it looks more reasonable. So you can always do that, and um, I don't want a box around it. So if I do my shape format, I can do the line and say no outline. So that can be a very useful tool as well. Uh, okay. That's how you're going to make your figure and get it into your Word document. Now, if you don't have the ability to print in color, then you're going to submit to the Dropbox, but I do want you to put it in your document so you can practice doing that. And uh, if you do have color, though, you just print it in here, and then that will be your results. Okay.
shape format and just make everybody one. I think that should be okay. And I'll just move them all up. So what you could do is you could do a test run of it. So you do it like this and then you can see if, um, not like this, you do just like one row or something and see how that goes onto the real slide. And then if it's working, then you can just leave it. But if it's not working, then you will know you need to adjust that. You know, if I could group these, then I could just do this and it would automatically resize everything but for some reason you can't group as far as I can tell yeah you can't group stuff so anyway all right so then I'm going to choose this row make another one that's going to be my negative control groups great doesn't look right 